All right, today on Ebrace Radio, we welcome a uh, three-time Drew League MVP, professional basketball player over in Cutter, also nasty Call of Duty player. I can I can attest to that myself. Um, <laughs> Franklin Frank Nitty Session, man, how are you, man? Uh, what up, man? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, coming into this, you know, I did, I did my research, read read enough of your Wikipedia. Um, you didn't start really playing basketball until high school. Um, how'd you get your start with basketball? I, I know you were a skateboarder before. Um, so how'd that all come around? Um, I was actually, I was actually doing like flip tricks off the stairs of the back of the gym. And, uh, the high school coach came outside and saw I was like, like agile and athletic. So, um, he basically just was like, come play. And um, I wasn't doing anything else, so it was more so like what all my friends were doing anyway. And um, I was just like, why not? Why not? I was, you know, I liked being involved. I liked being uh, in shape. And, I, you know, I like basketball. So um, I just I figured, why not? Let's give it a shot. Yeah, and and, um, and going throughout your career, you know, you, you had multiple stops along, like, college and and even through the D League and stuff like that, and and I even read the uh, the article about you and the undefeated, where um, you know it it took you a while to really uh, mature into basketball and really fall in love with it, um, and and do you think that now you're in a better place as far as basketball goes? Like you know you you really lo- I know I can tell you love the game now, um, but do you do you really think that you're like the you know you're they're the best version of yourself playing basketball right now? Um. I mean, I think you can always get better. Um, mm-hmm. I don't, especially after the year we've had with COVID and everything, it put a halt to a lot. But um, I think mentally, I'm the best version of myself. Um, I understand what I want out of life and what basketball can do for me now. When I was younger, I didn't. I kind of just was just playing because everybody else wanted me to play. Um, but uh, now, so to speak, like I understand that I'm good at it. Um, and I can get paid to do it, and, you know, um, I love the game, so why not? Nick mentioned that you had a few stops along your journey. One of those stops, your teammate, you were teammates with Dame Lillard. Did you know he was going to be that good when you were playing with him? Uh, 100%. You did? 100 <laughs> yes. Uh, it's funny. I made a joke when um, it was me, him, and a few other guys. At We were at Eastern Washington, and Rodney Stuckey's banner are his – from – because he went to the NBA out of Eastern Washington. And wait, was it? I think it is Rodney Stuckey. I think that's his name. But he went to the NBA out of Eastern Washington. Mm-hmm. And um, I looked at the coaches, and this is what was I? What was I? I was a junior at the time. Mm-hmm. This was after my, so I think he was a sophomore. And um, I looked at the coaches and I told them, I was like, y'all gonna hang, hang Dame name up there like that? And I laughed, and we all laughed about it. And then one of the coaches, which at the time was his trainer, was Phil Beckner, uh, which is still his trainer. And um, he was like, "Don't fill his head with stuff like that." I said, "Man, he good. We, like, I, like I know, like I, I have an eye test. Like I, yeah. just, like I know what an NBA player looks like." And he had all the tools to be an NBA player. And what set him apart from a lot of other people. And what people didn't understand is his work ethic. Um, his work ethic was probably the best work ethic I've ever seen um, from somebody ever. So um, once I saw that with the te- the little bit of talent he had at the time, um, and he still had two more years. Mm-hmm. So it was like, like I knew what he was blossoming to be. Like I knew he was going to be uh, one hell of a player. I didn't know he would be who he is today. Definitely not. Um that's just a te- uh, like a testament to his hard work, but um, he ended up uh, just grinding, man, grinding, going six overall. A lot of people slept on him, mm-hmm. uh, but I didn't. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um. So you know we're 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 giving a lot of a, a lot of praise to to Dame, but I mean, you're you're pretty damn good in your own right. Um, <laughs> and has anyone ever called you a walking bucket? A few people have. I've I've heard. That I, I would like times. to join the list. I, I will. I will call Frank Nitty a walking bucket. Um, you know, because uh, I've I've seen the highlights from the Drew League, and like, you know, you're you're not much taller than I am. I'm I'm six one. You're six two, and you 
yeah. you, you you get up there and you know and, and you make the you make the tough buckets and you can also shoot a little bit here and there um do you have a favorite of the three drew league mvps yep the first uh the first one i think the second one it's the year we went undefeated <laughs> i don't remember i don't remember which which one that is i think i think it was a 2017 year uh we went undefeated um we won a championship and then um i closed escrow on a condo in orange county that was my first like uh it, it was a crazy summer man because it was like bam 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 and then i went to go play ball um in canada so it was literally like a like a perfect year for like life mm-hmm. um as weird as that may sound i don't really compare that to like a drew league trophy um, but I compare that more to like the things that um aspired that year. So like uh going undefeated with the with the guys, um, winning an MVP. And then even when you win the MVP, you still need to win the championship. Um, because they give you the MVP and you still have two more games left. So uh to win that MVP, to go on and win a championship, to literally right after that closing escrow on a condo, and then right after that, um, like going overseas or going to Canada to play. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned that you played in Canada. Nick just said earlier that you're overseas right now. Since that you've played in different countries, different time zones, everything, can you notice a different style of basketball when you go overseas versus to Canada or in the U.S.? A different style of basketball. Um, it's all a little different. I will say that. It's all every, – every place I've been is a little different because um, people are different. Mm-hmm. So it's just uh, – I don't notice a different style of basketball. I just notice a different way of, like, different players handling things. Okay. Um, but I feel like when I'm playing uh, – I haven't been anywhere that's just been a cakewalk, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and half of that is because I play so hard, I feel like it's all the same to me. So um, I, f- I feel like most people who can just dominate somewhere might feel it's a cakewalk, but, I mean – I haven't averaged over 30 anywhere I've been. So, but I'm not really a go gunning type of player though, as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think uh, my first year playing, I didn't even, I didn't even work out. My first year playing, no, I never worked out. (laughs) My my Canada year, I didn't work out and I almost averaged a triple double. Uh, When I got back, I talked to my trainer, Keon, and I was like, this is what I want to be able to do. Mm -hmm. Um, And then that's when I had that next big year and, that's when you guys saw all the hot, the crazy highlights. And that was like my first viral year when I got back when I actually started working out. That's crazy. That, that, that is crazy. So, um, you know, you got recruited to the Drew League by uh, the rapper of the game. Yeah. Um, do you think the threat of him whooping your ass drove you to score 44 on Denzel Washington? Or, because I mean, <laughs> of, of all rappers, I think the game is top tier. I don't want to piss him off ever. Nah, he's, I tell people all the time, there's like a level of, I don't give a fuck. And he has the utmost (laughs) respect for that level. (laughs) Like he is the one player, like there's people you can try that, that you'll be like, oh, nah, he ain't really that tough. No, he's really that, that tough. And he was slapped the shit out of you. But (laughs) it's not, it's not really, um, it's not really like that with me and him. Uh, That's, we really like best friends. So literally on the court, what you'll see is sometimes if you've ever watched, like, let's just say a full game, like he'll come up to me and be like, we haven't scored in like two or three possessions. Like what you waiting on? So it's like, I got, I got him in my ear being a great teammate slash coach. And then I got my coach in my ear being a great coach. So um, I've told people all the time, like basketball is situational. If you got people um, who want you to succeed and who are going to keep feeding you to succeed, I mean, how can you not? So um, that's how I just I just had both of them in my ear um, when I needed a hoop, and it's kind of easy to hoop when you got everybody, you know, giving you the ball and just letting you play. For sure, yeah. To kind of spin off that question a little bit, who is um, like the best player you've played with that wasn't uh, like a professional athlete? The best player I've played with. Yeah. Dang. So whether it be pickup or anything. I think I think I think it's it's. <sighs> That wasn't fresh. It's between my boy Speedo and um and the game. 
Because so Speedo compl- Speedo is a is a hooper. I wish you guys would have been able to see him this year in a Drew. He's gonna play with us for the first time in forever. I've been asking him to play with me forever, but he's loyal to the soil. So I finally got him to come on board. But um he was on a different team. But it's between Speedo, he complimented me because he can do he can score, he can pass, he can he could just do everything. He's just smaller. Mm-hmm. But um and then his game, game as far as the motivation. The throwing lobs, the being that intimidating teammate to the opposing team. Um, it's between those two. They just they just bring different um levels of aspects to the game. I got one last question for you. So you played in the big three league, correct? Correct. Did you get interviewed by Rappaport at all? I did. Was he annoying? Because he seems kind of annoying. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, a lot of people find him annoying. I find him funny as shit. So, I mean, I don't know. It, it, to me, no. Okay. Um, he's he's fine to me. I mean, I don't know. He gives off that Will Ferrell vibe to me. But, I mean, a lot of people don't like Will Ferrell. So. He seems like Will Ferrell if he did a bunch of coke to me. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? Yes. Then you get me. So, uh, no, nah, he interviewed me a couple times. Uh uh, he loves me, man. We we actually talked a few times. Okay, cool. So um, I'll I'll close it out with, with sort of sort of a harder harder hitting question. Um, do you think you'll get another shot at at getting on an NBA roster? Because I know I know I know I know James Harden brought you around the Rockets and was really talking you up to them. Um, do you think you'll get another shot? No, 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 no. no. I'm 32, man. They're and the NBA, what a lot, not a lot of people understand is it's about your longevity. It's about how can they sell you? Um, Cause at the end of the day, there's no eye test when it comes to the NBA. I mean, Carmelo Anthony didn't have a job for how long, man? This is right. Carmelo Anthony. Like I'm just Frank. Like I'm <laughs> nobody, man. This man has tenured in the league and mm-hmm. couldn't get a job. So um, I don't really like just a lot of people don't understand the the politics of it all. You're not selling my ability to play basketball. Mm-hmm. You're selling me to the higher ups who don't really watch the shit. How can we, you know, how can we generate money from this? How can like, yeah, I got a great story, but I'm 32. Like, what are you going to bring me in for a year or two? I mean, they're not giving guys like anybody they bring in is especially this late. Anybody that, like I don't even remember the last person that got on, you know, after twenty five, twenty six. That dude um, on the Lakers, he signed like a two way contract, I think. They didn't bring him back. They never yeah, no, no, they didn't he, play, he played like once, like what ten games or something. Yeah, I mean it's nice. That's my yeah. guy, uh, Andre Ingram. Uh, yep. I was in the I was in the G League uh, in training camp with him that year, or the mm-hmm. year two years prior, but it's like. Even him, bro, he stayed loyal 10 years straight, man. And you, they brought him up. And what's crazy is he actually killed. Yeah. Like, he actually had a good run of games. And it's like, all right, well, we brought you up. Now it's just like. Go back like to tutor and math. Come on. Come on, man. Like, are we? Are, what are we doing? What are mm-hmm. we doing? And, like, mm-hmm. what a player like him, he would have made a killing overseas. Yeah. Like a a killing man, you know how hard it is to find somebody who can shoot forty five percent from three consistently. So it's like I tell people all the time, it's not really my, it's not a goal for me. It's never been a goal for me. My goal is to be to provide for the fam. Absolutely. Um, everybody yeah. sees like everybody wants that NBA stardom and everybody wants to be congratulated for making NBA. I've never mm-hmm. ever wanted that. You won't find one interview saying, "Man, I want to be an NBA player." And maybe that's part of the problem. Maybe that's why I'm not. At the end of the day, it's not something that, you know, I realize that shit's like hitting the lottery, man. You probably got like yeah. 500 people that play in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just a realist. I don't want to, like Pat Bev said one year, I'm going to go broke to, I, I went broke for this shit. I went broke to make it to the NBA. I'm not willing to do that. I'm not willing to, I got a wife, two kids, a mortgage. I'm not willing to go broke to play in the NBA. <laughs> it's, not, to, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not a hit or miss for me. I was, I had a nine to five. I was doing great. I bought a condo. I was living great. I was fine. I, I didn't need it. The extra money would be great. Don't get me wrong. Playing against the top competition would be amazing. But I'm 32. Playing against the top competition. I can do that in the Drew League. I can play overseas and provide for the family. Uh, for me to try to get an NBA now would just be greedy. I'd be just uh, 
taken away from I'd be taking away time and effort and opportunity from the fam. Like it's it's just not not that serious to me. Yeah, because I I think you're making a perfectly respectable living. Uh, you know, playing overseas. I, I'm completely fine, man. We bought a four bedroom house in Orange County. I built a sick ass game room. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I saw that. When yeah. I when I say I don't need the extra money, I'm okay, man. I even when overseas hoop is done, like I can t- articulate myself in any job. I can work mm-hmm. hooping. I can work training. I can go get a regular job again. I'm not one of these hoopers that just have to play basketball. I'm mm-hmm. not at any point in time. I can give this shit up, and I would be 100 percent fine. If anybody has ever seen me play, they know I put everything I have into the game of basketball. So I'd be fine to just walk away from it and be like, yo, I had a crazy run um, for, I don't know, like four or five years. That's good to me. Yeah. That's that's longer than a lot of NBA uh, careers. Oh, that's what I be trying to tell people. So, I mean, <laughs> a lot of people knock overseas, man, but it sucks to be away from the family, but – if you're an NBA anyway, you're away from the family. Yeah. I mean, unless mm-hmm. you're just flying them out. But even if you're flying them out or you buy a house wherever you are, you're still – you're playing 82 games. You're still yeah. not home. You're not home. So, And Jim, just, guys like Jimmer Fredette, they're like a king in Shanghai. Like, dude, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy how much love there is for the sport outside the U.S. People don't realize. It, that's the – and they get – and the CBA, man, they pay – I think it's a minimum of like $400,000 for four months. So, I mean yeah. – Make pretty good money. You work, you work your ass off or make the CBA. I mean, you're set for at least. I mean, if you do, if you do right, if like for me and my wife, like we budget per year. Mm-hmm. Like, so we don't, we, we make sure we're on top of shit. We're not out here just, you know, spinning crazy. We budget per year and make sure like if it's a, if, a, if it's a necessity, we do it. But we also have like bigger goals. We're not, oh, I need to get to the next league to make a lot of money to spend a lot of money. No, like we budget and we plan out accordingly. So, um, shit, if they were ever like me in a CBA, man, I'd be, <laughs> I'd be good after a year. <laughs> I, I set myself up so straight, man. So it is definitely a, a, um, a lot of money to be made overseas, man. For sure. Sure. All right. Well, Frank, I, I got nothing left, man. Um, where could they find you on social media and on Twitch? Um, on social media, you can find me on Instagram, uh, Twitter, um, it's Frank Nitty, two two T's, two Y's. On Twitch, it's the same thing, twitch.tv forward slash Frank Nitty, two T's, two Y's. Perfect, man. man. Yeah. Appreciate Uh, it. Yeah, man. uh, It was a lot of fun. Hope to have you back sometime, man. Good luck. Man, no time. Anytime, just hit me, man. I appreciate y'all having me, dog. Yeah, for sure, man. Take it easy. Yes, sir. Y'all too.